everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video we'll be taking a look at the most powerful Terangrial from the Wheel of Time series. Quick shout out to my channel sponsor Audible.com. I'm getting ready to travel again for business and one of my favorite things to do on the plane is listen to audiobooks. Audiobooks rock. If you haven't checked them out yet, specifically Audible.com, they are offering my viewers a very special deal. You can get a free audiobook without any commitment and support the channel at the same time. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for a free trial. You'll get an audiobook you can keep regardless of whether you keep the service or not. It's that simple. And like I said, you greatly help out the channel when you do so. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red with spoilers all the way through a memory of light. Please watch the video at your own risk. So one of the things that's great about the world and the magic system that Robert Jordan created in The Wheel of Time is the little things like the many objects of power that he created for his story. Terangrial are objects that were created with the one power to perform specific functions. They are different than Angrial and Sa Angrial, which serve to simply increase the user's ability to channel more of the one power. Terangrial actually do specific things. In this video, I'll be ranking the 15 most powerful Terangrial within the story. As with all of my top 10 list style videos, I've come up with a very nerdy ranking system that helps me formulate my thoughts. I'll be ranking each of the Terangrial based on four criteria. The first is power amplification. Does the object increase the user's power level or give them an ability that they wouldn't already have? Objects that get a high score here increase power levels and objects that get a low score can't be used by a single person or they don't give a user a new ability or an amplified ability. The second criteria is usefulness. Does the object have multiple uses or have a useful function. The more uses an object has, or the more useful the object can be, the higher the ranking. The third criteria is combat ability. Does the object amplify the user's combat skills? Some objects are more offensive in nature, some are more defensive, and some are passive and have no combat ability at all. Lastly, ease of use. How easy is the object to use? Does it require the user to be able to channel? Do you have to be a strong channeler or in a circle to use it? Or is the effect just passive and having it works? Obviously objects were made with different purposes in mind, so some will have extremely low scores in some of these categories, but that's the point. Objects that have very high scores will score well in all of the categories. I have weighted the rankings as well. Power amplification, usefulness, and combat ability will be scored out of 10 possible points, and ease of use will be scored out of five, giving each object a total score of 35 possible points. So without further ado, let's get into the top 10 most powerful Terangrial within the Wheel of Time. Number 15, the Dull Dagger. The Dull Dagger is just that, a wide dagger that appears to be made of iron but has never really been sharpened, and it has an edge that's described as not being sharp enough to cut butter. The hilt of the dagger is made with deer horn and it's wrapped in gold wire. The dagger was found in the kin stash of objects in Ebudar, and Avienda discovered its use with her ability to read Terangrial. Whoever possesses the dagger becomes invisible to Shadowspawn, including Merdral, Trollocs, and even the Dark One. For power amplification, the dull dagger really doesn't amplify anything and doesn't give the user a new ability other than hiding from Shadowspawn. So just a 1 out of 10 here. For usefulness, the dagger is very useful. For someone trying to hide from Shadowspawn, that is. Rand uses it to conceal his movements in the last battle, and even hide himself from the Dark One, showing up at Shea Ghoul without the Dark One knowing until he stepped into the cavern. The Dull Dagger gets a 7 out of 10 for usefulness. As for combat ability, the dagger isn't explicitly used in combat, but the effect that it has can amplify your ability to combat Shadowspawn. For instance, it gives the ability to sneak up on or hide from various entities of the Shadow, and using that advantage can amplify your ability in combat. 4 out of 10 for combat. As for ease of use, all you gotta do is carry it and it doesn't require the ability to channel or any skill to operate. Easy 5 out of 5 here. In total, the dagger gets a 17 out of 35 and earns the number 15 spot on my list. Number 14, Twisted Redstone Door Frames. The Twisted Redstone Door Frames are a pair of Terangrial that allow the user to enter the world of the Aelfin and Elfin through ancient agreements with those creatures. The Aelfin doorway was located originally in Mayen, but was traded to Tyr, where it sat in the great holding of the Stone of Tyr. If you enter this door frame, you can ask three questions from the Aelfin and they will give you answers. The Elfin door frame is located in the Great Square of Roideon. Entering this door frame would allow the user to make three requests of the Aelfin, but at typically great cost to the person requesting those things. So for power amplification, the doorways do not explicitly grant new power, 
but the information that you can gather from the Aelfin or the granted request from the Aelfin can greatly increase the user's power, assuming they survive. 4 out of 10 for power amplification. As for usefulness, they can be incredibly useful if used properly. Our main characters gathered extremely vital information from the doorway in Tyr, and Matt gained useful memories and a weapon in his dealings with the Eelfin in Roideon, despite almost dying in the process. 8 out of 10 for usefulness. For combat ability, there is essentially none, as they're not defensive or offensive weapons, and they can't be used as such. 1 out of 10 here. As for ease of use, they're quite easy to use, as there's no need for the ability to channel or anything else. You just simply walk through the door. However, you do need to be careful what you ask for and how it's asked, so that's the reason it doesn't get a perfect score here. 4 out of 5 for ease of use. In total, the Twisted Redstone door frames get a 17 out of 35 as well, and are in the number 14 spot on my list. Number 13, the Binder. So a Binder, or as it's known in the Third Age, the Othrod, is a Terangreal that makes oaths sworn upon it unbreakable. It can only be used on channelers, but it has other side effects. It gives the ageless look when an oath is placed upon a channeler after some time. Basically what it does is it cuts the lifespan of the person that the oath is on by about half. In the Age of Legends, it was used on criminal channelers of the One Power as a way to prevent them from engaging in whatever criminal activity they had been caught performing. In modern times, it's used by the Aes Sedai to swear the three oaths. They were unaware that it limited their lifespans as much as it did. So for power amplification, the binder doesn't directly amplify power, but it can be used to control someone, and that in itself can amplify power somewhat. There are examples in the novels where the Shaido Wise Ones use a binder to control Galena and her knowledge and power. For power amplification, the binder gets a 3 out of 10. For usefulness, it can be extremely useful. It can create unbreakable oaths that swear someone to a goal or into servitude. It can also help police channelers. It gets a 9 out of 10 for usefulness. For combat ability, this really isn't used for combat at all. The only remote combat use it could have is preventing combat from channelers, but that's kind of a stretch. It gets a 2 out of 10 for combat. Lastly, for ease of use, it does require the user to be a channeler, and that also requires that they be willing, in some degree at least, to swear an oath on the rod. It doesn't require a great amount of the power to operate, and it only requires a small thread of spirit to make it work. 3 out of 5 here. In total, the binder gets a 17 out of 35, like the other ones, and the number 13 spot on my list. Number 12, the Dream Spike. The Dream Spike is a Terran Grial that has a number of functions. It creates a large purplish dome in the world of dreams that prevents those within the dome from jumping out of that area in the dream. Touching that dome can hurt or even kill somebody within the world of dreams. The Dream Spike also creates an invisible dome at the same distance or area that that the dome is in the world of dreams in the real world. And that prevents traveling within that area. So for instance, if I was in that dome, I could not travel or use the, the one power to travel out of that area. For power amplification, the dream spike does not directly add to an individual's power, but it does add some control over their surroundings, both in the world of dreams and in the waking world. So there is added power there. It gets a 3 out of 10 for power amplification. For usefulness, the Dream Spike is extremely useful if you take advantage of its skill set. It can be used to protect dreams, prevent traveling to an area, or limit the ability for dreamwalkers to affect an area, among other things. It gets an 8 out of 10 for usefulness. For combat ability, it does allow you to choose the ground for a battle and limit access to it. It doesn't have direct combat uses, but it can be used in strategic thinking. The Dream Spike gets a 4 out of 10 for combat ability. For ease of use, the Dream Spike is a little complicated here. It doesn't require the ability to channel to be used, but it must be taken to the world of dreams in the flesh to be used. So it does require access to a gateway or the ability to shift in and out of the world of dreams in the flesh. It can be used by someone within the world of dreams once it's already there, but then it requires special knowledge to operate. It gets a 2 out of 5 for ease of use. In total, the Dream Spike gets... Again, 17 out of 35, and the number 12 spot on my list. Number 11, the Far Matting Guardian. The Far Matting Guardian is a Tehran Grial in the city of Far Matting that serves the purpose of preventing any type of channeling within its radius of influence. It can detect both men and women channeling and point to where it occurred. It also prevents men from channeling within a mile of the city, and it prevents women simply within the city limits. For power amplification, the Guardian does not amplify power at all. In fact, it dampens it. It is not usable by an individual, but rather it's a static sitting piece that basically affects an area. 1 out of 10 for power amplification. For its usefulness, the Guardian serves its purpose very, very well. It guards the city of Farmatting from channelers of all kinds. It's static. It's not useful at all 
away from formatting. For usefulness, the Guardian gets a 7 out of 10. For combat ability, the Guardian is purely defensive, but it does give a major defensive boost to people in the city protecting themselves from channelers. 5 out of 10 for combat ability. For its ease of use, easy 5 out of 5 here. The Guardian doesn't require any ability to use, and its ability is just passive in nature. In total, the Farmatting Guardian gets an 18 out of 35, and the number 11 spot on my list. Number 10, the Small Bent Rod. Breaking into the top 10 on my list, we have the Small Bent Rod. This Tehran Griol is a rod about an inch in diameter that, it, that is slightly bent and allows a woman to abrace side R without other channelers being able to feel it. It was found among Mount Gideon's belongings by the Black Aja sisters after her disappearance or basically her capture by Nynaeve. In terms of power amplification, it does give the user the ability that they would not have otherwise. By allowing them to be undetectable while channeling, this allows for accomplishing some other tasks covertly. 3 out of 10 here. For usefulness, the small bent rod is pretty darn useful. It allows for discretion for channeling and allows the user to remain anonymous. Combine this with weaves like the Mask of Mirrors and Inverting Flows, and someone can masquerade quite successfully as a non-channeler. 6 out of 10 here. For combat ability, this is actually a very strong Tehran Grial. By masking the ability to channel from a channeler, a woman can surprise attack another channeler, making this both an offensive and defensive Tehran Grial. The small bent rod gets a 6 out of 10 for usefulness. For ease of use, the bent rod has a passive ability and therefore gets a 5 out of 5. In total, the small bent rod gets a 20 out of 35 in the number 10 spot on my list. Number 9, Sleep Weavers. A Sleep Weaver is a Tehran Grial that allows for the user to access and enter the world of dreams. There are a number of different variations of a Sleep Weaver, from objects to rings, but they all accomplish the same thing. Some require channeling to use and some don't, however. For power amplification, the Sleep Weaver gives the user a completely different set of abilities than what they would normally have. The ability to enter the world of dreams is a very powerful ability. Sleep Weavers get a 7 out of 10 for power amplification. For usefulness, Sleep Weavers are pretty useful for a number of different applications. They can be used to spy on people or locations, have secret meetings, or battle within the world of dreams. 7 out of 10 for usefulness. As for combat ability, the Sleep Weaver does not give an advantage in combat in the real world, but as they allow for access to combat within the world of dreams, and that's something that they would not otherwise have access to, for that reason alone they get a 4 out of 10. For ease of use, some Sleep Weavers require the ability to channel, and a few don't. In objects that require the power, the level of power is not really that great. So they do get a 3 out of 5 for ease of use, but that kind of could push to 4 if it's one that doesn't require that. There is some skill needed within the World of Dreams to use it, so I'm just going to settle on 3 of 5 for this. In total, a Sleep Weaver gets a 21 out of 35 and earns the number 9 spot on my list. Number 8. The Fluted Black Rod. The Fluted Black Rod is a rod around a full pace in length and appears to be made of black stone. It can be used to create bale fire and is extremely dangerous to use, not only to the people it's being aimed at, but also the user. It was originally in the White Tower and was stolen by the Black Aja sisters when they escaped. It was used against Nynaeve and Terabon and later against the Andoran forces attempting to rescue Elaine Tracand. For power amplification, the Fluted Black Rod does give many channelers the ability to use bale fire albeit in an uncontrolled fashion. As many do not know the weave or are unable to make it themselves, this Tarangriel gives an ability that they would not already have. However, if you could already make bale fire, the rod would not be of much use to you. 6 out of 10 for power amplification. For usefulness, the rod is only useful if you can't make bale fire on your own and you need to eliminate something from the pattern. <laughs> so 3 out of 10 for usefulness here. In terms of combat usage, the Black Rod is extremely powerful, with the ability to end combat almost instantly by wiping your opponent from the pattern. 10 out of 10 for combat. In terms of ease of use, you do need to be able to channel to use the rod, so for that reason alone, it gets a 3 out of 5. In total, the Fluted Black Rod gets a 22 out of 35 and earns the number 8 spot on my list. Number 7. The Bowl of the Winds. Coming in at number 7 is the Bowl of the Winds, a Tehran Grial that allows for the control of weather. During the Age of Legends, there were many items that controlled the weather globally. No single bowl would be powerful enough to control all of the world's weather, but a few of them would. The Bowl of the Winds is a surviving weather regulator from the Age of Legends that was used by the Sea Folk and eventually was lost and sat in a storeroom in Ebudar until it was recovered by Elaine and Nynaeve and used in combination with the Sea Folk, the Kin, and the Aes Sedai to help reverse the Dark One's touch on the world 
and basically on the weather of the Westlands. For power amplification, the Bowl of the Winds greatly increases the user's ability to affect weather on a continental level. The Bowl easily gets a 10 out of 10 for power amplification. For usefulness, it's pretty useful. It can control the weather around an area, helping with crops, reducing storms, or doing the opposite. 8 out of 10 for usefulness. The bowl really has no combat uses whatsoever, other than to combat the effects the Dark One was having on the world. It was used heavily by the Sea Folk in the last battle to prevent the Dark One from using weather to kill the forces of the light at Sheogul. 4 out of 10 for combat ability. For ease of use, it requires a full circle of powerful channelers to use properly, making it very difficult to use. 1 out of 5. In total, the Bowl of the Winds gets a 23 out of 35 and earns the number 7 spot on my list. Number 6, the Bent Black Rod. Not to be confused with the Fluted Black Rod, the Bent Black Rod is a similar small bent black rod with a strange dull black look. It can both stun or kill a target from a distance without being detected by users of the power. It was among the belongings of the Black Aja sisters when they, that they took from Magidian. For power amplification, the bent black rod gives the ability to stun or kill someone undetected, assuming they can channel. 5 out of 10 for power amplification. For usefulness, the bent black rod is much more useful than the Balefire rod, and that allows for the stunning of a target or killing and it hides whoever was using it. 6 out of 10 here. For combat ability, the Bent Black Rod is really a great tool for that. It can kill or stun someone from a distance, and it's very discreet. 10 out of 10. For ease of use, it requires the ability to channel, but nothing else. So again, 3 out of 5 here. In total, the Bent Black Rod gets a 24 out of 35 and earns the number 6 spot on my list. Number 5, the Blood Knife Ring. Breaking into the top 5, we have the Blood Knife Ring. The ring is a Terangrial used by the Shan Chan that gives the wearer increased strength, speed, and the ability to shroud themselves in darkness, making them hard to look at. The ring does shorten the user's lifespan by a good amount, making it like a few weeks, but they are typically used for suicidal missions. In terms of power amplification, the ring greatly amplifies their fighting ability, senses, strength, and speed, as well as giving cloaking abilities. 8 out of 10 for power amplification. For usefulness, they can be really useful for assassination, sabotage, or any type of fighting, giving them a very focused use. 7 out of 10 for usefulness. For combat ability, they greatly increase the user's fighting ability in combat. They wouldn't do much for fighting with the power, but as they make the user harder to see or pinpoint, they can assist in fighting channelers as well due to their stealth ability. See Gawain fighting Demon Dread in the last battle? 8 out of 10 for combat ability. For ease of use, they are usable by anyone, but they do kill the user, hence the lower score here. 3 out of 5. In total, the Blood Knife Ring gets a 26 out of 35 and gets the number 5 spot on my list. Number 4, the Adam. With the number 4 spot on my list, we have the Adam. Adam are Tarangrial that allow for the complete control of a channeler by another person with the ability to channel. The Shan Chan make use of the Adam to control female Damani, the backbone of their military forces. There is a male version of the Adam called the Domination Band that allows for complete control of a man that can channel allowing for even control of their motor functions. For power amplification, the Adon gives the user the ability to control the channeling abilities of the channeler on the other end of the leash. And although you must be able to channel to use the Adom, it typically does give the user greater access to the one power than they currently have. 7 out of 10 for power amplification. For usefulness, the Adom are an incredibly useful thing, despite being a horrible device used for slavery. They can essentially give control over a channeler to someone else, and that channeler can be used for all kinds of tasks, whether military or otherwise. 9 out of 10 for usefulness in the worst type of way. For combat ability, the Adam allows for channelers to be turned into weapons. Damani are trained as weapons, and combat with the power is trained. However, the only limit here is the strength of the channeler, as the Adam does not increase their strength. This increases combat ability for someone that can't channel, but it won't increase their combat capability for a strong channeler that can already channel, if that makes sense. So 8 out of 10 here. For ease of use, you must be able to learn how to channel to use the ADOM, and you need to understand its basic usage from the ADOM. 3 out of 5 for ease of use. In total, the ADOM gets a 27 out of 35 and earns the number 4 spot on my list. Number 3, the Foxhead Medallion. Coming in at number 3 on my list is Matt's Foxhead Medallion that was given to him by the Eelfin after his encounter with them in Roideon. 
It gives complete immunity to anyone channeling flows of the one power at him. However, when wearing it, if a channeler was wearing it, they could still channel themselves, meaning that if a channeler were to wear it, they would be immune from the channeling of others, but they would be able to attack themselves. For power amplification, this gives an immunity to the one power to the user of the fox head adding something that is portable and usable by anyone in a number of different circumstances. 7 out of 10 for power amplification. For usefulness, it has a large number of uses in terms of protecting yourself from channeling of any kind. 7 out of 10 for usefulness. In terms of combat ability, this is where it really shines, as it makes you able to attack a channeler, and they're unable to hurt you or combat you directly with the one power. If a channeler were wearing it, they would be able to defeat other channelers with ease. Also, the medallion was able to hurt the golem, which is essentially invulnerable otherwise. 9 out of 10 for combat ability. For ease of use, its ability is passive as long as it's being worn, so 5 out of 5 here. In total, the foxhead medallion gets a 28 out of 35 and the number 3 spot on my list. Number 2. The Paralysis Net. The Paralysis Net is a grouping of a number of Terangrial and Angrial that gives the user a number of different abilities, such as deflecting weaves, detecting channeling, wells for storing the one power, and Angrial to amplify the ability to channel. And although this list is for Terangrial, the Paralysis Net were designed for channelers to augment their power. Both Cadswain and Nynaeve wear them, and Rand mentions that he wore the original one meant for a man when he was loose there in Telamon during the Age of Legends. For power amplification, they score very high as they essentially give the user a number of new abilities. For instance, detecting somebody of the opposite sex channeling, deflecting weaves, creating physical shields to protect their bodies, storing their one power in a well, disguising their ability to channel, among other things. 9 out of 10 for power amplification. For usefulness, again, they have so many uses that they're just kind of super useful. They can do a lot of different stuff. Uh, 9 out of 10 here. For combat ability, again a high score, as they were, they were essentially created to amplify the user's abilities to combat with the one power. 9 out of 10. For ease of use, they do require the ability to channel to use, so not everybody could make use of a Paralysis Net. 3 out of 5. In total, the Paralysis Net gets a 30 out of 35 and earns the number 2 spot on my list. Now before getting to number 1, let me hit a few honorable mentions that did not make the list. The Crystal Throne is a Tehran Grial that gives anyone that a approaches it a sense of awe at the person that's sitting upon it. This is actually the throne for the Shanchan. The pain rod that gives large amounts of pain to a target. This was used by the Black Aja. Call boxes that allow for speaking and communicating over vast differences by non-channelers and channelers alike. Alviarin uses this to communicate with Masana. Samael hands them out to the Shaido. There are also Terangrial that gave visions of self-discovery or visions of the past like the glass columns in Roideon or the silver rings and the archways within the White Tower. I'll have my full list and all of the rankings posted on Patreon after the release of the video so you can see some of the other honorable mentions. Number one, the Chodian Call Access Keys. Coming in at number one on my list may seem like a bit of a cheat, but they are really Terangrial. The access keys to the Chodian Call are miniature statuettes that allow the user to access the Chodian Call. Immense Saangrial, far more powerful than any of the others in history. They can level cities with ease, and they are speculated that they could destroy the world. In terms of power amplification, well, this one's kind of obvious. They increase the user's power to such a level that nothing could stand against it. Easy 10 out of 10. For usefulness, that much power gives the ability to do essentially anything. 10 out of 10 here as well. For combat ability, same deal. Not much anyone can do to fight against you when you can destroy the world with the power that you're wielding. 10 out of 10. Lastly, for ease of use. You must be able to channel to make use of the access keys, and on top of that, you have to have exceptional strength with the one power to be able to use the access keys. 2 out of 5 for ease of use. In total, the access keys get a 32 out of 35 and are in the number one spot on my list. So that's it. My list of the 15 most powerful Terangrial within the story of the Wheel of Time. What do you think of my list? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new content. Check out the Patreon page if you want to see the full list among the other perks that patrons have. You can find the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?